Hello and welcome to Treasure Vessels, our podcast where we want to discuss your songs in the light of the living word of God. Hey, hello and good day to everybody, all our mates around the world, even on the opposite side of the globe. It's almost another day in Australia. But right now it's Saturday morning um, towards the end of December, not quite Christmas yet here in Lexington, Kentucky in the USA. It is right now 7.13 in the morning. And uh, I want to say good morning to you, Manasse, over there in India. Hey, hi, Carolyn. It's good evening here. So I'll say good evening because it's uh, 5.45 p.m. here. And it's always nice to see a smile from Kentucky. And uh, this is a nice uh, cold day here, not too freezing. And it's so good to be alive after 21st December. <laughs> Just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> okay, I would like to welcome uh, a special guest today uh, from Australia. Welcome, Vlad. Hello, Manasse. Thank you. So, Vlad, uh, tell us what time it is there. It is quarter past 11 p.m. Yeah. So almost another day. Mm -hmm, almost. And uh, what kind of uh, weather did you have today? Uh, it was uh, pretty nice and warm weather. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's not winter there? No. No, it's summer. <laughs> yeah, we're, on, we're definitely on opposite too. sides of the world. <laughs> yeah. You're mowing the grass and we're getting ready to shovel snow so <laughs> that's true yeah so you said that you like to stay up late and that's okay with me because uh i was about ready to get up at three to be with you at five no i'm fine with that yeah <laughs> so sleeping until five was really nice for me hey okay so um before we get along too much farther we want to play a little clip of your um, music that you prepared for us and let people get an idea of your sound thank you have to say that last one was pretty far out there that's some <laughs> jazzy stuff if this sounds and really you know, really good on the earphones actually and uh, the lover squirrel uh, that has some Indian uh, beat I believe I don't, I'm not sure because it sounded like uh, uh, we call one instrument which is named as Dhola you know that's a uh, percussion so yes it sounded yes like it has Oh, that's nice, because uh, it was more like a Bollywood feel to me here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Well, that's pretty nice. You got a good ear there, Manasse. So, okay, so Vlad, um, we asked you to come here today and talk to us and, and pick a subject in, uh, well, you know, just from seeing some pay, uh, posts on Facebook, I know that you, you like birds as well as music. And so oh, yeah. we thought we'd have a little discussion about both today. Kind of a little surprise there. Yeah. But uh, if you don't mind, you know, like back up a little bit. I want to see that bass over there. Oh. Uh, ah, so oh, more than one bass. That's one. Cool. Which I, which I normally use. Yeah. Uh, for recording. Let me have a picture of that. And this is uh, another bass, which is a fretless. Which I use uh, many songs, just to give a little bit uh, a soulful sound. And the third one is just a guitar. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like you know, it. I always uh, admire bass players. You know, in a band, they are always mm -hmm. like you know lost in the mood and playing their you know. Like, you know, lead guitarist will go crazy, and the singer can go crazy, and the drummer can go crazy. But the lead, or the the bass player is like, okay, what you doing? I'm just playing here. You know, <laughs> I always <laughs> like it because you know, like, uh, bass is something which uh, needs to be there always. Like I can skip the beats, I can skip uh, pads and all, but I need bass to be feed on my ears. You know. <laughs> Yeah, okay. bass player has got a has got a role where he sometimes has to divide himself, uh, yeah. uh, play play the groove, uh, sometimes swing into the melodies and yeah. so on. Yeah, so the versatility so, is the important yeah, thing. I'm, I'm so glad to have you here. Yeah, you're like mm -hmm. a bass legend in SoundCloud, you know. <laughs> oh no, no. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just just <laughs> da down the earth bass player. I'm trying to be. <laughs> In all styles, and mm -hmm. I like collaborate with people. Yeah, so. uh, I love all your styles, you know. So, yeah, for me, you're like a legend. <laughs> so, Thank when, you. how long have you been playing bass? When did you start? I started playing since I was 17 years old. Uh, played with uh, many bands, many people. Then had a, a slight break because of the accident and started again, yeah. And I joined the SoundCloud a year ago and I absolutely enjoying it. So, okay, I didn't know about an accident. Yeah, well, uh, for the, I lost uh, a tip of my index finger on my right hand, which is uh, oh. absolutely uh, devastating for the bass player because you use mm -hmm. fingers. So uh, I had to retrain my hand uh, to play back again. Oh. So, wow. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. Ah, it's just one of those things which happens and uh, yeah, but it, it was uh, around two years which I didn't touch the instrument. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I put it, I put my guitar down for that long for not a reason like that. I mean, just because I felt felt things, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, did you want to did you want to uh, play any of that bass for us, or, uh, or no? No, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a late late at night. Oh yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> right. Sorry. That's right. So if I blast the amp, ooh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to wake up the neighborhood. So. <laughs> So, okay, so, um, well, since we're talking about music right now, um, we just want to share a little bit, a few, a few little scriptures that, you know, that we got out of the Bible about music. I mean, um, Manasse, um, I know you've got at least one. Uh, yeah, like, uh, uh, basically, uh, if you talk about music out of the scripture or, uh, like choirs are famous for music. Like you know, in churches here in India, uh, Christians basically are very famous about their choirs. They have uh, uh, 
uh, impression like you know uh, if you're a christian you have to be a very good musician or you know like uh, different people who are from different religions they'll say uh, oh for sure he'll be singing good or playing something because that is uh, uh, impression and i know uh, it is here or it is in us because the music is very important to, uh, for the worship part in bible we have worship in everything i mean uh, it says uh, whenever like you know people think of uh, what we'll do in heaven or you know whenever we we'll go to heaven it's just it will be the just worship and nothing else and mm -hmm. that's what i can you know come up with uh, uh, overall from the bible because it is just about worship and uh, nothing else there will be no sorrow or nothing else and uh, you know, music is so beautiful, which is, you know, uh, a divine thing. Like, it uh, doesn't matter which language, which country, or, you know, what age, it uh, doesn't matter. But uh, if uh, you have music with you, you will just, uh, uh, you just mm -hmm. have that uh, presence, the divine presence, uh, what, whatever you call, uh, you know, the positive energy or angels around you. But there's something which is related to happiness which takes out everything from you. So that's well, what I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, the music is a, is a, basically, which I would say, a multi-language, which connects the people, regardless yeah. of, of, yeah. of their language or, or beliefs or what have you. So whatever music is out there in the world, it's, either likable or someone yeah. might not like certain styles of music but it, to me it's a, it's, a, it's a common language between people and also it creates the moods, happiness, sadness, everything, yeah, everything is hidden in music. Yeah, I, I agree and um, it does, it, it does touch us, it touches our emotions, and it touches us deep inside. Um, one of the scriptures that I had uh, thought of was um, in the Old Testament. I don't know if you're familiar at all with the um, stories about the children of Israel. And they, they wanted a king to be like other nations, and, they, and God gave them a king, and his name was Saul. And... Um, it became apparent after a certain amount of time that Saul wanted to do his own thing. And so God searched for a man that was after his own heart and um, to be the new king. And that was David, who is the, the most famous king of, of all of Israel's history. And David played the harp and he used to uh, be out in the sheep fields with the sheep and he would play the harp. And mm -hmm. he was young and Saul was bothered by an evil spirit and he heard that David could play the harp very well and so he asked for David to be able to be brought into the king's palace or tent whatever and David played for him and when he played the music the evil spirit would leave Saul mm -hmm. and 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 Saul loved him at first and David and Saul's son Jonathan loved him too and um but David was such a valiant warrior that he, um, he, he was able to do a lot of great victories. And so one day he came back into town and all of the women were singing and they were saying, well, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his tens of thousands. Uh, when, when King Saul heard that, he was jealous, really jealous of David. And so he got into his mind that he was going to kill David. And uh, he said, well, David, come in the tent and play for me. And David started to play for him. And Saul had this javelin and he threw it yeah. at him. He was going to pin him against the wall, but David escaped. And for a long time after that, David ran and hid from him while he waited, you know, for God to manifest um, his kingdom. But there's, um, you know, if the scripture says that, uh, you know, music can... Uh, chase away bad, you know, evil spirits and give you relief. Well, I believe it in my own life. You know, when I feel bad, sometimes music lifts me up. Mm. 
lifts everybody up. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm the same. Mm -hmm. But like you also said that uh, sometimes music can be bad. Now, sometimes music makes me feel bad, too. There are some pretty heavy-duty things out there that people put some heavy emotions and feelings into. And so uh, I like happy music. I like, I like to be lifted up, you know, but there's a place for everything. Sometimes I want to listen to crying songs, you know, you're feeling sad. You're ready to yeah, listen. It's like, you know, when you need support and, uh, you know, uh, you don't want anyone else, you can just listen to some song and it can support your emotions if you're feeling low or something. So, yeah, depends mm -hmm. on what kind of mood you are in. Well, let's, let's give a listen to your um, feature song. And uh, it's Dandelion. What's Touch. the other one? Dandelion Touch. Touch. Yes, here we go. That's really, really nice. I could have listened to the whole thing. Thank you. So where did you come up with the name Dandelion Touch? Uh, because basically the song itself is uh, it's very soft. And uh, Dandelion, before, before it flowers, it's also very soft. And when you a blow it goes everywhere softly so yeah. and it can touch you and sit on you and you almost don't feel it mm -hmm. so it's a it's a based on a on a softness that's why the title oh well that's yeah. neat well i like it a lot it's really really a nice tune and um you know, uh, I like I like uh, dandelions too. I, I've 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 experimented making dandelion tea. People make dandelion wine, and you can eat dandelion leaves. Honey as well. Honey, dandelion, dandelion honey. honey oh, yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> All right, good. So uh, so speaking of things in nature, so uh, you've got a lot of birds around your place. Oh, plenty, plenty. Mm -hmm. Many, many, many species of birds, from uh, yellow-crested cockatoos to king parrots, rainbow lorikeets, eastern parrots, galas, uh, kookaburras, which is uh, the laughing bird, sounds like a monkey in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and uh, I started kind of communicating with the birds Mm -hmm. Talking to them when they when they come into the garden, and uh, it was just a couple of them initially, mm -hmm. and I believe the birds they have their communication absolutely perfect, mm -hmm. and they start coming in flocks, mm -hmm. and sometimes three three different types of parrots or four different types of parrots. And uh, I start feeding them with the sunflower seeds, mm -hmm. and they become very friendly. They basically come and sit, sit on my hand, have mm -hmm. a, have their meal, and go back to the nature. Wow! What's What's fascinated me is, uh, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't like to have a caged bird at home. Like some people, they like it. That, that's fine with me. But uh, if if they can fly in 
straight from the nature and then go back to their freedom mm -hmm. that's very important to me as well yeah. yeah that's really good you know speaking of flying birds yeah <laughs> you know I was just curious uh, a lot of times when I look up something in the Bible I like to look up where did it show up first and of course mm -hmm. we know birds would show up in the beginning in creation um, let's see it was on the fourth day of creation it says God God brought forth um, all the moving creatures and the fowls that fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven and uh, mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty cool line there actually and he, he liked birds so much not only did he make them but he also made sure they went into the ark with Noah right yeah well, I, I don't know much about Bible to be honest I, I am a, I'm a born Christian but um, I uh, I believe uh, I, I do believe in a higher power I'm not I'm not uh, going to church because uh, I've seen many hypocrisies happening when it comes to religion and I'm sorry uh, it's, okay. it's, ju it's just a disagreement with certain things and uh, I choose my own way and uh, my own beliefs, so to speak. Yeah. You, know, you sound but... like my dad, you know, like <laughs> we also don't go to church and it, it happens everywhere, you know. My dad is a teacher, Bible teacher, but he doesn't go to, uh, you know, a building or church like here. Yeah. He just goes to the field where he feels like people need words, you know, and where there are clear-hearted people who will not focus on all these hypocrite things and stuff like focusing on money or, you know, focusing on a higher position. That's what happens in every church, in every world. And, mm. you know, since we have been talking with so many people from different countries, now I experience it's not just in India. It's in uh, every country, like wherever we have big denominations or big, uh, uh, you know, big uh, church body. Uh, Satan has a way to get into them. You know, it's not the person. It's not the uh, uh, human. But again, to break uh, the actual church body, he tries to do that. So I agree, uh, with, uh, you know, and I respect uh, like what you have said there. So, uh, yeah. I yeah, I understand too, and probably some of the things that you disagree with are, you're probably, you know, are, are lined up in the Bible, but that they're not actually doing in church, or they're doing the opposite, or, you know, and Manasseh is brought up before that, when uh, people start getting interested in a building, that there so much of their focus and energy and money is spent on the upkeep of this building and beautifying it and instead of you know going out and really helping people um uh you know the church i go to um we do a lot of mission work and we have an old building but it's nothing you know huge or big or elaborate um but there are some gigantic churches in this world that oh, are really, yeah. really out to, um, you know, uh, they they have the right intention to want to glorify God, but they're also they also want to make people happy and comfortable and have. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, you you like to be able to have a place for your kids to go that's safe to hang out and things to, for them to do, but. So it's kind of like, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it. I do believe that going out and helping people is more important. Yes, it is. Um, For me, if, if I would have to call, call it a church, for me, the church would be a nature. When I can go down okay. to the bush, uh, enjoy the flowers, the trees, um, the animals, the birds, that's that's for that's good for my soul that is good so, i love good. that i love what you said uh Vlad, because that is what uh, uh, the actual design is 
you know, well, if you will read how Jesus used to walk, he, you know, 80% of the time, he is always near the river, you know, or on the mountain, or, you know, sitting uh, up on the bushes, or near the bushes, or, the, or on the grass, you know, even playing with the kids, or, you know, talking with his disciples. Yeah. Every time, he is there in the fields, in the nature. He went, he went and spent alone time in the nature, but then yeah. he also spent a lot of time with people. And so, you know, the people gathered around him in the nature. So really the perfect church would be having people around you out in nature. And then when you're alone, to be communing with God out there and getting your strength from the Lord. It all sounds very good to me. And uh, having all those awesome sounding birds around would be really great. Um, you know, I don't know if you know this, um, but most a lot of people don't know that, you know, like out of the scripture and Noah's Ark, um, when he brought all of the animals in and then after it rained 40 days and 40 nights and it and uh, he let a raven out first. People only seem to know about the dove. Yeah. At first he let a raven out and it flew back and forth and to and fro around the earth. It never actually came back for him to put its hands on him. And then uh, I think seven days later, then he let a dove out. And the dove, she couldn't find any place to land and she was tired. So she came back and he pulled her back in. And then seven days again later, he let her out again. And then she came back with an olive leaf in her mouth. And, and then seven days again later, he let her out again. And then she must have found a place to nest because she didn't come back. But um, I thought that was a pretty cool story about some birds in the Bible. Yeah, it's it's like uh, you know birds are messengers for us. Like you know we say, like we, I can uh, relate them like angels. You know, so as you said, like bird have a nice way to communicate with each other, even with. Oh, yeah, them. they do. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. So do you have and, like uh, ravens? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Manasi. What were you gonna say? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Are you sure? So you yeah. have like some blackbirds around there too that maybe are not your favorite type of species. Oh no, oh, we've got we've got uh, also ravens here in Australia, and uh, one of the most beautiful birds, which are black, are black cockatoos. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you see when you see them flying. It's almost like in a slow motion, not oh. like a, yeah. Is it's, it very it's just, a big? It's just, because, sorry, sorry, Manasseh? Yeah, sorry, uh, is it very big in size? I mean, when you say it's uh, it's like a slow motion, so maybe it's a big, I'm just... Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fairly big bird, uh -huh. like, um, and, and uh, they've got this special sound like, like from... <laughs> It's going to sound funny, like from beyond the grave. It's yeah. really di distinct, <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's just beautiful to watch them when they when they fly. So mm -hmm. yeah, I I always enjoy watching the birds. Not only birds, nature. Yeah, so. <laughs> I like yeah. the nature too. And uh, I got I started to get into bird watching myself a little while there, and I was learning bird names and. But we don't really, I mean, our birds seem so plain, you know, compared to what you've got there. Uh, you know, um, even the big birds that we have here in America, like eagle or hawks, you know, they're they're pretty brown, gray, you know, off-white colors. And um, we have a few smaller birds here that are colorful, you know, like cardinal or um, oh, yeah. finches bluebirds but uh most of them around here are robins and sparrows and um we have uh, blue jays you know mm -hmm. they they can be pretty bossy chase the other <laughs> birds away and and uh mockingbirds you know mm -hmm. it's fun to watch them they all have different personalities and some yeah. of them will dominate and chase the other ones away and 
Yeah. In Pune, we have a lot of uh, doves, wild doves, you can say, and uh, a lot, a lot. In uh, in every building, they will be sitting on top, you know, and they'll be flying every day. We do have eagles and raven also, but uh, very less sparrows in the city. Like uh, where I was uh, born in Potter, there we had a lot of sparrows. They are very cute little, and I, I you know, I loved them. Yeah, they sound very musical also sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sparrows. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, you know, um, out of Leviticus, uh, when it was talking, this is, excuse me, I think out of the Old Testament that I had looked up about birds. Um, sometimes birds were used in sacrifice. And um, like, for instance, if a person who had leprosy was healed, then they would take two birds um, and usually when they did a sacrifice they would use like a dove and and they would take one and they would kill it over the water and I don't know exactly what that means if there was a basin and then there was water underneath but then they would take the other bird and they would dip it in that bird's blood and they would also sprinkle it on the person with leprosy and then they would take that live bird and they would let it go out in the field and um, I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. There's a lot of stuff that you could pull up out of the Old Testament that um, is, uh, signifies uh, the, the sacrifice that Jesus made for us and how he, he was sacrificed in our place and we are like the bird that was let go. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's just... Um, there's so many different things that you could talk about, both about music and about the birds and about nature. And the Bible is so full of really wonderful scriptures. We could really be here all day talking about it. Oh, but, yeah. Um, those are just a few things that we pulled out. But, um, well, before we go uh, too much longer, let's um, listen to a second spin of your music. Thank you. like your music Vlad and uh, there was like Thank you, birds Caroline. singing in that track I love like you know all those birds are singing that kind of sound was there <laughs> in the second <laughs> one yeah <laughs> now for yes. anybody who wants to listen to your music they can go to soundcloud.com forward slash Vladaroo V-L-A-D-A-R-O-O <laughs> like the Vlad with the kangaroo that's it <laughs> <laughs> and so on your spins that you sent us you have um 
you've done some collaborations with a lot of people, but the ones that you sent us today were with Dave McCowan, Darren Chilton, which is Spectrum One, and uh, let's see, Dave Friend, Music Crucible. Yeah. Let's see, Max Dave. Black. Yeah. Dave Greening, Sean McBride. Yeah. All great musicians. Yeah, I'm um, uh, very much influenced by some of these great artists, and uh, it's it gives me absolute pleasure to participate in their music because that's when a, when a deeper communication is happening mm -hmm. amongst the people, and music also creates friendships. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Being on a that. That's what happened uh, in my case, being on a SoundCloud, and I'm I'm very happy when it comes to this. Yeah, a I know. Lot of lot of lot of influences there for me. Same here with us. We all met on SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and um, yeah, we hope that we also see the um, old SoundCloud preserved as well. So, oh yeah, very very important. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, know. if they want to do both, that would be great, you know. The old <laughs> yeah, sound those who like new, they can just click on that, you know, <laughs> new one. Well, there, there is a, there is a lot of, a uh, lot of talk about uh, what, what the developers in SoundCloud are doing, and a uh, majority of the people, they don't like the idea. So, I'd say if, if. Uh, if people can send a message, or anyone can send a message to the SoundCloud team and asking for old SoundCloud to be preserved, or have them both, depends on what, what people choose, that would be the probably the, the best option. But uh, yeah. yeah, we just yeah, have to sure. see and wait and see. They're doing a lot of talking and thinking, I'm sure they are. Mm -hmm. they, they don't want to upset people. and. Uh, they probably hoped everybody would be happy um, with the new, but sometimes, yeah. you know, it's it's hard to accept new things if, if it's going to be a really big change. It makes you uncomfortable. But um, yeah, I would really hope that they preserve the old and and let us have our choice to be where we want to be. That would be great. Mm. So, um, okay, you guys. Well, it's been a really a great pleasure talking with you, Vlad. It was a great pleasure talking to you guys. Thank and you very so, much. Thank you. I want to say a little prayer for you before we go. Lord, I just ask you to bless Vlad and his family and everybody there on the other side of the world. Continue to help him to uh, draw closer to you out in nature and help him to share um, you with others even more in his life. I ask you to watch over him and bless his music too. And, uh, God, watch over us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Vlad. Thank Bye. you, Carolyn. Bye-bye. Thank you, Manasseh. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate your listening to Treasure Vessels of the Living Word. You can find us and make comments on the audio tracks at our website, treasure-vessels.com. We hope you come back soon for our next podcast. Until then, God bless and thank you for listening.